All right, hey everybody, welcome to Speech Bubble episode nine. Hey, um, I I don't have my normal co-host Jace Deal with me right now. I've got another co-host. He's even more special than Jay Steele. And actually, he told me to say that because he's just, he's that special. I'm here with the fabulous Rob Paulson, who does voices on cartoons. Is that what you do? Occasionally. That okay, uh, what are some of the voices that you do? <clears throat> uh, I did. Okay, a- roll the theme music. <laughs> right. All right, Butch Harbin here. Welcome to Speech Bubble, Episode 9. Rob, we've been on for nine weeks. That's great, Butch. Nine weeks, Rob. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. First of all, I'm, I'm here with the And fans. they said it wouldn't last. And they said it wouldn't last. Yeah. And I don't know who they are, but I'm yeah. going to find <laughs> yeah. them, Rob. I've been looking for them. Good. Hey, it's awesome. I'm. Uh, we've done uh, We've done Speech Bubble now for nine weeks. We're getting some really good reviews, some five-star reviews, mostly Excellent. from my mom, which is very exciting. Well, that's what moms are for. That's what moms are yeah. for, exactly. But uh, Jace's mom is all over the <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah. She packs his lunch, puts him out. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> that nice? Nice. <laughs> He's the nice. His little tough puppy onesie. That's right. Exactly. Look how Rob is plugging the podcast. Yeah. Right. Hey, so anyway, everybody, I'm here with the amazing Rob Paulson. And uh, Thank you. It's, it's my honor to have him here. Thanks, Thank pal. you, Rob, for oh, showing up, buddy. Not at all, buddy. Those of you who may not know who Rob is, first of all, shame on you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, deep, deep shame. In fact, I, I even got rid of my co-host this week for you. My co-host normally sits there. I'm Thank right you. here. I'm oh, right here. Oh, there's Jace. Oh, oh, Jace oh, is off camera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the audio people can hear him, but the, 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 the right. visual people can the magic can't. of Hollywood. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They can't see him. And by the way, the only reason uh, Jace is over there, we don't have three chairs. So okay. I, we have... Well, when you get a six-star review, you'll get a chair. <laughs> six-star yeah. review, Good. exactly. Well, those of you who don't know who Rob is, uh, I'm just going to go Please. over a brief, a brief resume, if that's all right with you. I'm flattered. Uh, if, you, if you IMDB this guy, you're going to see nothing but uh, page after page after page of stuff but i'm going to kind of give you a brief rundown on what he's done you might know him from animaniacs number one you did the voice of yeah go hello nurse they're very nice yep. yeah if you uh, animaniacs that's one second is pinky in the brain yes that is me narf yeah. oh, oh, pinky, hello pinky we're going to take over the world oh that's you're so much younger and better than maurice <laughs> i know i'm yes. better than maurice oh and everything exactly so pinky in the brain animaniacs um Ninja Turtles. Now, wait, before we go to Ninja Turtles, you've been on every incarnation of animated Ninja Turtles known to man. Am I correct? No, but almost. almost. I, I was I was Raphael on the original batch. What uh, year what, what year was that? 1930 years ago. In 19, fa- 1930 years ago? Uh, yeah, 1930 years ago. 1987. Wow. Um, in fact... Uh, they had was, cartoons back then. Oh my! Well, they were <laughs> they were all on flip caves, books on, on caves. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, and many people don't know that I was the entertainment at the Last Supper. Oh, as well. I what was, your name uh, was Shecky of Arimathea. And we'll be right back. That's Thank right. you very much. We're uh, <laughs> Jesus, what a party! Anyway, um, no, I I, I, I was Raphael um, with the on the original show with Townsend Coleman as Michelangelo, Cam Clark was Leo, and Barry Gordon was Donatello. And, and what color? Uh, I was red. red. I was the red guy. And you were who again? Raphael. Le- Raphael. Okay, gotcha. and Raphael. then. 25 years later, the nice folks at Nickelodeon, um, uh, the folks at Viacom, rather, um, purchased the rights to TMNT. Mm -hmm. And so there was a a new version that popped up around 2011. Mm -hmm. Um, This is the CGI version. Right, which is now coming to an end. It's been a five-year run, 120-odd episodes, and then I was Donatello on that one. (laughs) Still not as many as Fairly Odd Parents, but but go ahead. But the cool thing about (laughs) about our gig is exactly what we're talking about, is that nobody cares what we look like, obviously. (laughs) Um, But the fact that you have been kind enough to hire me many times, I can, uh, Frank Welker has been, um, um, Frank, uh, um, Freddie on Scooby-Doo since 1969. Higging. Right. Higging. This will solve a mystery. And he still does it. Still does it. Right. Amazing. So I am, oh man, I, I, I am living the so, dream, Butch. Dude, I know. And, and you are, one of the things I love about you that you're, um, first of all, you're super talented, number one. And I think Thanks, with any good voice actor, and I've told this to many people in animation and outside of animation. People go, I want to do voices. I want to do voices. I'm like, that's fantastic. Yeah. But if you're going to do voices, you need to make my show better. Right. You can't come in and learn how to do voices. Beautifully said. Yeah, you need to come in and help. You need to make my life easier. That's yeah. why you're there. Well, you're a creator. See, that's the difference. And you have you have a lot of sway and a lot of credibility, obviously, with your uh, background and your, um, your IMDb. But when you talk to young people, when you talk to actors – you're coming from the, the perspective of somebody who hires us. Absolutely. And that's a totally different animal for me. Yep. I am a hired gun. And it, it, I learned a long time ago, you know, A, the competition between all these actors to, to up our game 
makes us all better. Absolutely. And 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 what I also learned is that you want us to come in and knock it out of the park. Oh, you have to. You know why? And um, number one, like I said, you make my show better. And then um, you take what we've written. We've spent weeks and weeks writing oh. stuff. And we know what we want, and it's great. You need to at least deli- you need to at least deliver what we want. Sure. And if you can plus it and make it even even greater, oh my gosh, that mm-hmm. just makes things even better. I'll give a, here's a great Rob Paulson story for those uh, who obviously don't know this story. We were um, unfairly on parents. We were casting a character named uh, we didn't have a name for his name, but oh, his name was Mark. Oh right. And he was an alien. I love that guy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dude, do a little Mark. Do the work. okay. Exactly. Hi, I'm Mark Channing from Hugo <laughs> Batavia. <laughs> I cannot, uh, I cannot remember. Right, I cannot remember <laughs> anything that I am saying. He um, and Rob got that voice. I remember we we had this alien, and you, and you write a character. Timmy meets an alien. You write the dialogue, right? And you're like, um, we 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 had puny humans. I am here to take over the world, or whatever. And we auditioned like, and this is back in the days we'd actually have actors come in and oh, audition. I miss was, that. So- I know this. I do too. But I then now everybody does their auditions yeah. and sends them in via the interweb. And uh, so Rob comes in. We auditioned. We must have auditioned. We had. I know what it was. We had forty guys lined up. Oh not, dear. not even joking. Like, are you kidding? Twenty me? to forty guys were wow. coming in, and you were the first guy in. Are you kidding the me? First one in. And so we got Mark. Okay, Mark Chang auditions. We're going to be here for four hours. Okay, Rob's coming. I love Rob. I'd met you before. You worked with me on Hanna Barbera a couple. Oh on a yeah, couple of things. on uh, Gramps. Gramps, that yeah. cartoon Gramps. Look that up, internet yeah. people. Gramps. So um, Rob comes in and he's like, "Puny," oh, say "puny humans," and then say, "What's up?" Say that. I said, "What's up?" Yeah, you're I like, said, "Puny I said, humans." Puny humans. What's up? <laughs> I'm here too. And then we're like, "Oh my god, that's great." He made the he made the alien a surfer dude. Right. And you just plussed it so much, okay. and I went, I went, that's the guy. Right. We can write for that. We can we can take that character and just add so much because he's a he's a dumb surfer dude. Right. And that's our job. That's my job. And but right. my point is that it was a miserable day for me because you came in, you were number one. Uh. You left. You you in your in my mind you got the part, and the other thirty nine guys came in, and I went, I am an alien. They were oh, doing yeah. this type right. of a voice. They were right. doing the conehead thing. Yeah. And which was a fine voice. Sure. But you just nailed it, and it was great because you added that little something extra thank you. that a lot of actors need to add. Well, I think thank you, and I, I appreciate you a hiring me. But we never recorded that anything that no. you did. But, you beat the but just tar out of my voice <laughs> for nothing. I just ripped off your voice and did it yeah. myself. I'm thank joking. You. It was Rob. I didn't. Uh, I didn't really no, it, but but that's a really really important point for young actors to know because um, all of the people whom you have been kind enough to hire. I know pretty much all of them. Yeah. All, we're all friends. Yep. And I don't know of v- very many who do not have a live performance background and acting, performing, stand up, improv, singing yep. background. Yep. So, what happens now today, as I kind of call it the American Idol syndrome, is what happens when we get a lot of people, and, and I tried to, to couch this in a way that doesn't sound like sour grapes, like when I was a kid. But the truth is, it seems to be more about being famous than than working on the craft. You know what yep, I mean? Yep. So people who are 15, 20 years old, I run into and they go, you know, I think I really want to, I can do a great, listen to my uh, SpongeBob. Jimmy, Jimmy, or my Jimmy, Jimmy Yeah, right. I do a great impression. <laughs> That's wonderful. But yep. you're not an actor. You're not a performer. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. And, and that doesn't mean that you can't be. Yep. It just means that it's not about the silly voice. If you come to LA and say, I've got this, uh, List of voices. I do SpongeBob, and I do Pinky, and I do Jimmy Neutron, Mickey Mouse, and I do Mickey. There are people doing that, yeah. and you're not going to get that gig unless yeah. one of them dies. Yeah, and and so don't go kill the voice actors. Right. We're not saying that. No. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's really about learning how to perform and learning how to create and mm-hmm. learning how to think on your feet. Mm-hmm. Improv is a huge plus and oh, skill for people that huge. you hire. Yeah, exactly. Because I, like I said, when you came into that audition that day, yeah. you improv a couple of lines with that character voice. And it was like, oh my gosh. Then you start expanding the mind of the writer and the creator. Like, exactly oh, we can, right. We can, oh, we can make that guy do this. Exactly right. We can right. make that guy. Do, like I, We had Jerry Trainer in here last totally. week. Totally. And Jerry, we, we couldn't find an actor to play Tough Puppy that was really right. And Jerry came in and just did his Jerry thing. And it was like, we can make this guy anything we want because he he is a capable yeah and b fearless hey jerry would you try this sure i'll try it and same with you know maddie taylor all these people yeah who are uh uh, darren darren Mm -hmm. so bright um d 
they're all so smart and bright. Carlos and they are well, maybe utterly, Carlos isn't that bright, but maybe go ahead. Carlos is and <laughs> folks like that. They're utterly fearless, so they don't care about whether or not. And really, it's not about you know what you look like. It's about you being willing to jump in the pool and play. Yeah, I remember um, just bringing up Carlos again. Carlos Elizraki, he's the, so the great. Carlos Elizraki, I, I put him in the same category with oh, you. Uh, we'll easy. Have him, we'll have him on soon. Uh, guys who are older than me, but we're gonna have, that'll be the whole category. Yeah, of the <laughs> that's pretty much everybody. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. No, but Carlos, I remember when he auditioned for Mr. Crocker. He goes, he goes, I've kind of, and he said this in the audition because again, it was one of those situations. You're thinking, who's this guy going to sound like? We had we had some big names come in for Mr. Yeah. Crocker too, and Carlos comes in and he goes, I'm going to try a little Richard Dreyfus. Little Richard Dreyfus with Gene Wilder, and he combined Gene Wilder. How about that? And he combined from Young them, Frankenstein. Combined yeah. them both, right? And Mr. C Mr. Crocker came out of that, and it was amazing. And he, he had these like, little moments where he could go over the top like that. Yeah, that yeah. And you Very guys, good yeah. Right? And then, then you start to write for that. Then you're off to the races. Right. You're like, oh my gosh. And that yeah. is the that is the genesis of a well developed character that ends up not only being a a huge part of your vision oh yeah yeah but entertains millions of people forever yeah quotable lines right i'm always on the lookout for quotable lines and Great. quotable voices i'm right. like can someone will, will a kid on the playground like i used to do as a kid when i would watch flintstones or bugs bunny or whatever will a kid go to his buddies Perfect, uh, yeah. the next day and quote the line of a cartoon absolutely and hopefully they will right people do that with me when i go to meet them and and they uh they love mark chang mm -hmm. they'll say they ask me to say uh uh I'm in love with Vicky, <laughs> or or Shaw. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and they and and I was only like a secondary or tertiary character. Yeah, exactly. But what's great First is that first of all, thanks for saying the word tertiary. Oh, not Teaching at all. Teaching the audience, yes. But with you know, uh, um, uh, Darren and Tara, and, oh yeah, and all the main star cast of the show, mm -hmm. those are iconic characters that yeah. you've created, and you hired people who knew what they were doing to enhance your vision and it works oh, i appreciate that you know and it's not it's not it's not a secret we know how it works no i know and, but, and the, th the cool hmm. thing is like you were saying um I, I yes i did create the character but i think it's almost just as do, uh, it, there's just as much credit due to the voice actor for bringing well, thank you life i mean to it, it is a, to be sure a deeply you're not getting any extra money no 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 no, I, no I learned that years just, ago let's just make sure we're clear on that i learned that i got paid in <laughs> canadian dollars um but but it, we it love is our friends in canada it is to be sure a a hugely collaborative effort oh big time and mm -hmm. the ultimate compliment for a, a, somebody who does what i do is when a creator and an artist i can't draw stick figures but if you come up to me and say here's this thing i'm looking for because i'm i'm looking for some ideas i'm looking for uh, hooks things that people can you yep. know remember yep uh, choices walk choices. in walk in with a choice and that's clear a big and bold and if you say yeah. i like that not so sure about it what else you got then I'd some, dig something else out yeah. of my and that's bag one of the great Again, that's one of the great things about you is I could always ask you what else do you have yeah. and you ne without missing a beat, you always had something. Right. And, and, that's, I, that's, and that's, Jeff Bennett's another one. Oh my gosh, we'll yeah. have him in here too. I think uh, once he gets out of jail. But we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get Jeff in here as soon as we can. Jeff's one of the mighty, mighty <sighs> warriors of voice acting who... Oh who, first of all, he never stops talking when he comes into the audition. He just never stops. The brain is constantly firing. But any voice, and, he, so and he's gifted. like you, he, com, the real human completely vanishes yeah. from the voice. Like he if I do so voices, you can hear Butch Hartman in there a little bit. But like Jeff Bennett just vanishes, Rob yeah. Paulson vanishes, you know, Darren Norris vanishes. And it's hard to make Darren Norris vanish because yeah, he's got that Darren Norris That's voice. right. His voice has got such an edge. It cuts right oh, through. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, he should do phone messages for mm -hmm. sure. And I'm, it, gosh, there's so many things to talk about with you, Rob. And, um, so there, there's fairly odd parents. You did, um, you did uh, Mark Chang for me, and I'll, oh, I was going to say, all the great voice actors I've worked with, you, Tara, Darren, Gray, Suzanne Blakesley, you guys could also do a hundred other voices. Yeah. So I would meet voice actors out in the world. They'd be like, "Why don't you ever hire me for your shows?" I'm like, "I don't really need to. I have right. five amazing well, people." Well, and you know what? That's sick. They they can do everything for me. And I learned that years ago. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, on the, about the Simpsons because uh, Mark Hamill is a good friend. You know Mark. I know Mark. Yeah. I've worked with him forever. Was he in a movie or something? Yeah, he's in a movie with the the, the thing space puppets. Sub, or, uh, space um, thing. Yeah. I but that. Uh, we were talking about the Simpsons because I've known Nancy Cartwright long before the Simpsons. Oh yeah, I've known her forever. Danny Castle, the voice of Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. For those who don't right. Know, right. Good, dear, dear friends. Um, but we were talking about primetime animation and I said well you know that just hasn't worked out for me I'm very grateful that I have the work I have but and he said well it's interesting you mention that because the only way Mark got a job on the Simpsons was by being Mark he got a job on the Simpsons as a as Mark Hamill at a convention 
right? <laughs> and the reason is precisely by what you just suggested. They have a core group of actors who are so freaking good. Well, Hank Azaria. Well, Hank can Tress. Do, can do anything. Tress McNeil has done 600 episodes of The Simpsons. Oh my God. Harry, Dean, uh, Harry Shearer. Harry Shearer, okay? Yeah. So they don't need any more. And I, and the same thing with Futurama, I get it. Mm-hmm. So to the extent that I am one of your uh staple you know your repertory company on any show wonderful and and i know and by the way i want to say rob makes a mean chicken sandwich that's right thank, thank you me. and thank you for that by the I way i appreciate it makes lunch the, the secret is leaving it in your trunk in burbank for a day or two <laughs> uh, with extra mayo and we'll but, be, and we'll be right back yeah but uh uh but that but uh, so i totally get why that happens and why as, as there will always be m- more actors then there will be jobs yep, to hire that's, them. and that that is an, that is a truth and everybody should and that's just the that. nature of show business mm-hmm. but if i'm a producer and i'm and butch hartman going i can hire uh rob and jeff and cree and uh suzanne and gray and, and tara, tara yeah. and get with seven and Kari actors, walgren's Kari, another one i just uh, or you know what I've, I've used rob five four or five times it's time to i'm going to throw in d bradley baker for the next episode whatever whatever it is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you cannot take that personally you, you, you understand that it's about your vision. It's about you saying, I love all these guys. And if you're not in the show, it's not personal. It's what's yeah. best for the project. Well, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because it's like you don't want – a lot of actors take it personally. Though. I know, but, but you know, with all due that. respect, you got to go, look, dude, if you're going to be an actor, yeah. you got to learn to take an, uh, 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 an yeah. emotional punch. Not because it's brutal, because it's the nature of show business. And with all due respect to any of you out there who are going to be an actor, when you decide to make that choice and you are in Hollywood and things go south financially, you can't make the rent, you got to you got to decide whether by whether you have to show up for your job mm-hmm. or show up for an audition. Yep. And sometimes you quit your job to make the audition. And mm-hmm. you, I, I, I get it. You've been, been there. I've been there. But you know what? I feel sorry for you for about this long because nobody ever forced you to be an actor. That's it is right. a wonderful thing to be able to experience. Mm-hmm. It is a incredible gift to wake up every morning and look around you and say, my God, dog food, braces on my kids' teeth, my cars, everything is paid for with showbiz money. Yep. That's a huge gift. And not everybody gets to do it. But what you do get to do is to make the choice to, pr- to pursue your passion and your dream. Along with that comes responsibility yep. to not blame anybody else when yep. it goes south. That's the because that's part. the nature of show business. Mm-hmm. Butch Hartman, as successful as he is, started as a freelancer. There will be a day in which he will be again because everybody has a deal that expires, right? Our deal expires at the end of every session. Mm-hmm. And, and I accept that. Wow. There well, are so. very few people who are like Steven Spielberg or whomever, and that's okay. It's free enterprise. It's show business. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to go out there and say, I'm going to try new ventures. Uh, I'm going to look for new ways to ply my trade. Or communicate with the audience. Communicate with an audience. Mm -hmm. Create a new audience. You're embracing. You've got a great assistant. All this cool stuff that you're embracing. The ultimate uh, upshot of all of it is, is that Hollywood doesn't need you. They don't need you. They don't need me. And it's about convincing them that they need you for this project yeah, yeah, and exactly. then be willing to take a punch when you don't get the next one. That's exactly right. So and, and anyway, I, you know, for allow me, thanks for me, letting me pontificate. That, and we'll be right back. No, that was fantastic. I, I honestly, I, it's you're, there's so few actors like you that say all those things. A lot of actors do take it personally. We live in a very victimized society right now. Well unfortunately. said, Unfortunately. But um, like you said, like, I, you know, Fairly Odd Parents didn't drop out of the sky for me. Ha <laughs> ha. You, know, no. you know, Danny Pham didn't drop out of the sky. These are things that, that you know, this, that only in my case, you have to work on. You have to work very hard. Well, you even have a more difficult circumstance because I'm not a show creator. I literally, I'm just an actor. I mean, I'm creating more stuff now. But, oh, and we're going to talk about that. Right, but I, I, yes. I don't do what you do, okay? And it's not an easy thing because <clears throat> as soon as you create a hit, the pressure goes up exponentially. Oh, big time. Mm-hmm. When you've got a hit and Viacom has given you their money mm-hmm. uh, th- via, th- through Nickelodeon mm-hmm. and says, okay, Butch, you, got, you really kicked the hell out of this show. This is mm-hmm. great. We're doing a great thing. We got mm-hmm. picked up another season. What else you got? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got this other thing. And then you go, well... Okay, this is going to be hit too, right? <laughs> who knows? You never know. And, and, and but the but you're the guy mm-hmm. whose name is created by, produced by. Mm-hmm. You're the guy with the deal. You're the guy that has to spend their money 
uh, wisely. Wisely. Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. And and if you don't get another hit, yep. you end up like M. Night Shyamalan. There you go. Right? And, yep. and, and good for him. I mean, I hope he made a lot of dough, but not everybody follows up hit after hit yeah. after hit. It, it after is, hit unless you're one of the hit. Beatles. And even, that, right. even, even they stopped after a while. Yeah, and all yeah. I have to do is show up and read for your next show. If I get it great, you do if more I than don't. That, but yeah, yeah, but, exactly. but, but if, if you hire me, great. But if the show goes away after 12 episodes, I get paid mm -hmm. and I'm on to the next one. Mm -hmm. You're going, oh my God, this show didn't, this show tanked. What do we do? As an exa I know not, exactly you, what you You know what I mean? Yeah. Now I got to come up with another one. Exactly. So it's a tough gig, but you're not asking anybody to save your ass. You're saying, I accept this. Uh -huh. This is part of the job. Mm -hmm. I don't expect anybody to give it to me. It's competitive. Mm -hmm. It should be competitive. The mm -hmm. reason we get better is because there's a new Butch Hartman or there's a new Rob Paulson come mm -hmm. along who's going, I got that guy in my sights. Mm -hmm. He's been an inspiration, but I really want to... I want to up him. Yeah, that's yeah. the idea. That's, what, that's, that's why there are new kids that come into training camp at, at sports franchises every yep. year to get that job. Yep. And that's what makes the audience, that, that's ultimately why the audience gets better, hopefully, uh, better content. Amazing. Uh, you know? Uh, the, but this, it's, I, I didn't even, I'm not even paying this guy to be on the podcast today, and you're giving me all this amazing no, inspiration. No, but it's exciting because if you decide not to embrace what's happening, mm -hmm. then you go the way of the buffalo, and you come, you get bitter, and you start saying, well, you know, when my day and all this, that's great. This is not your day anymore. How many how many bitter people have you met in your career? Yeah. Thousands. Right. And most Thousands. of them, I have to say, are not voice actors. Most of them are pretty nice people that, yeah. that do who do what we do. Yep. yep but yep. if you choose to say, screw this, man, uh, I look what I've accomplished. Okay, great. And you can decide, uh, okay, Rob, you have done a couple thousand, 2,500 half hours of animation. You have a, an, an Emmy. You have... How many Emmys do you have? I have one. One Emmy. And you have a ton of Annie I Awards. I have half a dozen or three or four Annie Awards and a Peabody Award and all that stuff. But no, I've, been is, I've been nominated for 16 Annie Awards, and I've lost all of them. So I'm the Susan Lucci the, of the Annie Awards. But you know what? Awards. Right. Well, the year I won my Emmy, Susan won, finally won her <laughs> Emmy. I remember it was 1999. But, but the point is that all of that, all of the hardware... And four bucks will get you a latte. That's true. And that does not mean I want to give it back. Mm -hmm. What it means is there's a point at which you may say, okay, Butch, you've done a lot of work. You've decided that you're not going to work for anybody for uh, unless they give you this kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Great. And you've earned that right. Whether or not people will res respect your wishes enough to do that remains to be That's seen. That's a crapshoot. Right. Same yep. with me. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, if they don't know what I can do by now, then I, I don't know what else I can do. I have helped create iconic characters. They are famous. I am not. Mm -hmm. Now, that's changing. No, you kind of are. That's well, changing. It's changing. Yeah, that, we're going to talk about that. It, it is changing. Yep. However, if I say, you know what, agent, I don't want to read for anything else unless I can be in front of the producers. Then I know I can work it and I can see what they're doing and that's how I right, prefer it. Right, so right. with that comes the responsibility that I may not get as much work. Right. Am I willing to try to find a way to embrace this new technology as you've done yeah. to up my game, to kind of find a new income stream and not be bitter. Yeah. And in my case, I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And you've, and you've, uh, speaking of that perfect segue, and we're, by the way, we're going to get to Danny Phantom out there. I know my audience. Oh, good. Wants to hear you know, I was his father. <laughs> that's a I've Fan seen Danny naked, you know, <laughs> just yesterday. Sorry. I've, I've changed his diaper, mm -hmm. his ghostly diaper. Um, that was Jack Fenton, by the way, uh, Rob, the great Rob Paulson. But Rob, you got to end up doing your own podcast. I did. About five years ago. Right. Before and you anybody... were gracious enough to be on it three times. Well, thank you very much. But, uh, but still, I wouldn't have been able to be on anything had you not created it. So well, let's talk about your podcast for a thank second. You. So what it's, is the, first it, of all, let's plug it. What is the name of your podcast? It's called Talkin' Tunes, T-A-L-K-I-N apostrophe T-O-O-N-S. That's a stupid name. Let's change well, that. Well, it so is. Keep going. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to use speech bubble, but I <laughs> I was not prescient enough that's to think awesome of that. That's an awesome name. Yeah. Right now, I'm just kidding. Talkin' um, Tunes, yes. Talkin' Tunes, because that's what we do. We talk tunes. Um, oh, I thought it was music, like Talkin' Tunes. No, like, it's Talkin' T-O-O-N-S, not T-U-N. Welcome back to Name That Tune. I have been known to do tune tunes because of because of Animaniac, especially. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I, I, be, I, it occurred to me one day, Butch, that, and you know what? I'm so glad you said this. This is one of those moments that I had. Uh, you know, we all have these epiphanies in our lives, mm -hmm. whether it's something as a result of a tragedy or work or, or a relationship, whatever. Or necessity. Or necessity. Mm -hmm. um, and this was an, a, a necessity, an epiphany, and that, old, that phrase about necessity is the mother of invention. I had a period about six years ago where my career just got very slow mm -hmm. and it happens and this is such a great cautionary not even cautionary for any anybody for anybody. in showbiz yeah it's really not cautionary because it happens 
And so... We'll say stuff happens. Uh, stuff happens. Pardon me. <laughs> stuff. stuff happens. Um, I was working a lot, and all of a sudden it just came to a, a, a kind of a halt, and it was not anything that I did wrong. It was that it was... I got to a place where I was so ubiquitous, people were using me a lot. It happened to Frank Welker. It happened to other people where you kind of go, you know, we love Rob, but there's a couple of new folks in town we'd like to try, and we're going to get them on the show. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So I started to panic and because I have a couple of mortgages, and my son was out of college, but, you know, all that stuff. My, my wife was, uh, doesn't work outside the home. And so we got to change that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Amway's not just soap anymore. Um, but anyway, <laughs> like an my, my point is that I, I literally was going through a period where I thought, holy smoke, it's done. And I'm not ready to be done. Yeah. And I podcasts were just starting to happen. Mm -hmm. And I started to be a guest on several of them. And it was like, you know what? You don't have to be an MIT grad to figure this no, out. No, which is thank God. That's why I'm exactly. doing it. Exactly. <laughs> and this is way more sophisticated than when I began. I literally looked at my phone and said, wow. Um, Mark Hamill, Tress McNeil, Butch Hartman, uh, everybody, Frank, they Tara all, Strong. They're, Tara, I have all of their numbers and they're yeah. all friends of mine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can start doing, nobody else is doing a show about the people who do animation voices. Yep. Yep. And, and I, you know, the risk of sounding arrogant, I can say, wow, I have a lot of credibility. Yeah. Because between done a lot of stuff. Um, your shows and Pinky and the Brain and Animaniacs and a couple of Ninja Turtles and Jimmy Out News, uh, Jimmy Neutron and The Mask, The Tick, um, Bump in the Night, Mighty Max, all that stuff. Amazing. I at least have credibility. Yeah. And so I started coming to your place and other and doing my thing. Cut to a few years later, we started doing it live at the John Lovitz Comedy Club. That was a blast in Universal City. Right. That and was then, a lot of fun. And then after that, we did it at the uh, Improv, which was equally as fun. And then Chris that Hardwick. That was a great night. We had a great time. Oh, we had a night. ball. That was so much fun. And then Chris Hardwick, who we know now is the creator of The Nerdist and on every other talk show, and he should be. He's a funny guy. worked very hard. Mm -hmm. He and I met on um, a show at Nick called uh, it was, Back at the Barnyard. Oh, it wasn't the X's? It was that? No, it was back at the back barnyard. Back at the barnyard. Okay, got and it. And so we got to be fast friends, and this was that just- That show's not as good as my show, is not it? Not even close. No, I didn't think no. so. The right. only Thank thing I would, that was as good as your show was me. <laughs> um, but uh, Perfect. Chris, his star started to rise, yeah. and uh, a couple years ago, or, or there, a few months back, rather, um, after Nerdist had become what it has become, mm -hmm. he and his folks who work over at Nerdist, which is now under the- uh, uh, auspices of Legendary Pictures, their digital media, media wing, they said, uh, listen, we're creating this new platform, a pay platform called um, Project Alpha. It is a meeting between Nerdist and Geek and Sundry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mesh mesh the two together. And would you ever consider doing Talking Tunes as an on-camera show? And I said, well, sure. Now, how many, before we get there, how many years had you done the audio before they approached uh, you? Probably four Wow. Yeah, four so years. There, there's another lesson real quick, mm -hmm. and we'll come back to this. You it, it, And made, by the way, made not one dime. Not a dime. Not a dime. No, now, we no had sponsors, the, nothing. No. The evenings that we had at the improv, and the, I, I would get, I don't know, 60% of the gate. But what is it ends up being 250 bucks. Yeah, yeah. And by the time you're done, the people you, that, you know, you want them to come in, buy them a few drinks. So yeah. it's a wash. It is, and yeah. by the way, it was never done... Ultimately, we'd like to make money out of it. Of course. But the fact is, I am doing precisely as an actor what I would be doing in community theater for free. Yeah. Because it's my Jones. Yeah. It's my passion. Yeah. Now, the trick is finding a way to get paid for it. Exactly. And But it was a four- or five-year process. And this is what another cautionary thing about anything in entertainment. Yes, Butch. It's a, it's a time... It, it, it takes time. It takes There's time. seed, time, and harvest. And you passion. plant the seed. Yep. See, everybody wants to plant the seed. Oh, I've got the idea. Everybody wants the tree right away. Oh, where's the wait, Where's the tree? It takes that little bit of time for that thing to grow. And sometimes and a lot of time. A lot of time. And how exactly. many times do you hear about some crazy giant franchise that was passed on by studio after studio after studio? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. so, so somebody subscribed this. Some, um, somebody submitted this manuscript. 15 times yeah i have the the uh w w harry potter yeah how many times is yep. um uh, forgive me the lady who uh, wrote, jk Rowling. yeah mm -hmm. that says i got turned down and turned down and turned down yep. and she says that the, the most fun i get is having a couple of uh, glasses of wine and looking at all my rejection letters i love that and sylvester is, stallone's another one another one with the rocky with movie. rocky yeah. and so yeah. to me as i said a little earlier it's kind of like the the um you know the american idol thing 
It's not that the people who are on American Idol aren't talented. They're very gifted. Yeah. But they haven't been in the position where they have to experience how, how fast it can go south. And the fact is that most of the people who have won American Idol to date, what are there, two or three who sell records? Ba- Carrie, Barely. Carrie uh, uh, Underwood and Carrie Kelly Underwood. Clarkson. That's it. As far as I know. Yeah, can you name, uh, let's have a contest. Name another American well, Idol. Well, and the, it's, it's, the it's, beautiful little girl, I can say little because she's way younger than I, the, the uh, brunette who was on... Um, um, Catherine? Yes, she was, on, she was on Star. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, she my was God. She an amazing singer, yeah. Incredibly gifted. Yes. Stunningly beautiful. I know, yeah. Huge poise. You're talking about Great me, gift. me? You're talking about Butch Hartman? No, I'm it? talking about Catherine. Catherine. Oh, sorry. But I apologize. I always hear Huge this. ego. Incredibly <laughs> unattractive. Now I'm talking. But great hair. Exactly. We'll be right back. But the, but the point is that he, this girl has had two record deals that I know of. Yeah. They went... Poof, yeah, now that her career's not over, no. But and and her mother is a, a singing coach. She and she grew up in Hollywood. She knows the game. Yeah, yeah. But if you're from, in my case, you're from Detroit. I'm yeah. from Detroit. That's and right. Flint, we Michigan. are, but we are both from uh, Michigan. Yeah. Right. So you get up here and you go, oh man, this sucks. Well, yeah. But what did you expect? Yeah. And 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 I think sometimes people expect it not to suck because they think I'm going to be the one that gets the. Hitches my star to yep. American Idol. Yep. And boy, if I can get in there, I'm really good. Of course you're really good. I'm really good. Yeah. But I'm not nearly as good as I uh, as I hopefully will be tomorrow. Yeah. And I'm way better than I was when I got here. Yeah. But I have to tell you that when I arrived in Hollywood and it was no, 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 I expected that. Yeah. I didn't go home and say, I-, I can't do this. I went home and go and saying, do I really want to do this? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I went back at it. I went Funny, back I didn't it. expect it. I thought it'd be yes, yes, yes all the yeah. time. Because well, every, everybody in my hometown was like, yes, yes, yes. Right. And that's what people have to, and we'll get back to your podcast in yeah. one sec, but uh, everybody thinks that when you come from your hometown and you're a star in your hometown, best baseball player on the on the, on the the Little League team. Every best baseball player <laughs> it comes, comes to USC comes, exactly. to try to make the team. And then you, that's when the competition really, really starts. Like when I got to art school, I went, oh, oh. Oh, well, they're I'm, good too. Oh, I'm there super good i've got to up my game here but the thing that or, I, or you or you fade away but yeah. i i had the added benefit of having been on the road with a theater company for two years before i moved to la mm. and then i spent another year in a rock and roll band that was essentially you know a live human jukebox for a year and a half back in in the midwest traveling around the club circuit but you learn really quickly you learn how to think on your feet yep. you learn that you blow a line on stage and you fix it Mm-hmm. Um, if you suck one night, you figure it out and, and don't suck the get next night. Get used to being in front of an audience. The yes. fear goes away for that, yeah. And so you, and you audition and you don't get this gig and you audition. Yeah. And so you're right. You get here and you find out that, wow, every prom king and queen come to Hollywood. Yep. And they're all handsome. And they're all ta- not all talented, but often it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. they're really handsome and they fit the suit. Now, the trick is, can you stick around long enough so that your talent comes through yep. and allows you to have not a gig, a career. I'm 61 years old. I've been earning money and paying my bills doing this since I was about 26. Almost 40 years. Almost 40 Unbelievable. years. And I am so grateful. I know. That's coming across. Everything Everything you say, oh. you're so grateful. And, but and the, that's it, one thing we have to yeah. tell everybody out there is be grateful. I tell I, Attitude I, of gratitude, I was my ju- friend. I was just at the CTN Expo uh, in Burbank, the animation expo this yeah. weekend. I spoke to an audience of youngsters there. I say youngsters are all 25, sure. 26. Sure, art school. But one of the main things I said, and Jace was there. He can tell me. My, there's Jace, my co-host over there. Hey, dude. Uh, Jace, but Jace, I told everybody, uh, they said, what's the first thing you do in Hollywood? I said, be nice. God be bless nice. you, my I go, friend. be nice. Because nobody wants to have to deal with you. Exactly. They want to be able to work with you. But if they if they know they're showing up to have to deal with you, Man, things aren't going to last very you long unless it, you're unless you're like the next James Cameron or something. And even they shouldn't be the way they you are. You nailed it. And the yeah. fact is that when uh, now having been a Hollywood veteran for a long time, um, I, uh, and I and I'm not one of those people who uh, denigrates Hollywood by and large because it's given me not only a great living and yeah, there's some goofballs out here and it's a wacky way to make a living. But the people with whom I work on a regular basis mm-hmm. are the most gifted, yep. unpretentious, down to earth people. I, you, Billy West, DiMaggio, Tress, uh, Jeff Bennett, Frank Welker, all people I would have to my home mm-hmm. and have been to their homes. I've never have, been invited to your house, by the way. Well, I, it's because I, I don't want you to know, you to know where I am. <laughs> but 
but they're the most the nicest people. And so when I run and Steven Spielberg, the, to the extent that who is that? I've got he's a nice kid from the valley. Okay. <laughs> My, he likes he likes making movies. Yeah, well, he's got a he's got a he's got a, a photo mat, which is actually not doing very <laughs> a well. Photo mat. Wow. I gotta learn to come to this century. But exactly. uh, no, when I run into people who are arrogant and difficult, I have no patience for oh, it because does. I know people who are so talented and. To the extent that I've I've gotten to work with Mr. Spielberg on three or four occasions, and probably will get to again. As a professional, not a nerd. Right. Yeah. And he is delightful. Yeah. So if if somebody's going to be, you know, respectfully, if you're going to be a jerk, you better be so talented. Oh boy. That you can save your money and that people will do whatever they have to do to work for you, dis despite your being a jerk. Yeah. But most of the it's time, not worth it. It's not worth it's it. It's not worth it and, at all. And also, it it. If you've got two people whom you can hire oh, yeah. who are oh, both talented dude. and one guy's easy to work with and one guy's a pain. Dude. Dude. Part, well, part of the reason I've, I've hired you many times, number one, I, I really love you as a person and you're hysterically funny. You make things better and you're easy to deal with and you're great. You come in and make things better and more fun. That's why I always record. We're grateful the, to be there, but, man. Well, that's why I always recorded the shows with an ensemble. Yes. A lot of shows record one actor I know, at a time. Your way is way better. I love having everybody in the room because we just rip on each other. We have Everyone gets to know what everybody's doing in their life. It's right. just, it's just, it's it a makes big, your it's, show better. It's like a party. It's a, it's, it's a lot. And, you, and plus, you come out of there hysterically laughing. Well, and you cultivate that you cultivate oh, well, that experience yeah. but you really do no it's a lot of fun but i mean you come out of there having just a blast yeah. having a great time and there's there's a scripture in the bible that says a merry heart does good like a medicine and yes so, and i don't mean merry heart you know host of entertainment tonight no, i no, mean I just, a merry happy heart m-e-r-r-y yeah, yeah m-e-r-y but uh going back to your podcast so yeah. i uh, well, we, thank we, you. we love i love digressing well, with it we could do this for no six, that's seven fine hours. and thank you but I'm like, I, so you're on the you you worked hard for four years yeah. not making a dime Doing your own audio right. podcast, bringing your equipment, setting up your microphone, standing out in the rain Precisely. when I wouldn't come out to talk to you. Precisely. As always, yeah. right? Uh, I was Standing about, outside a restaurant while you're eating going. <laughs> Looking in the window. I'll be within a second, Rob. Yeah. Waiter, can we get that kid out of the window? <laughs> Please, Butch, may I have some more? <laughs> you have the, the fingers, yeah. the gloves with oh, no fingers in the absolutely. Guy. But it's, it's, and then, then to have Nerdist call. Yeah. And, and, and now, now you're, now I would imagine they're paying you something now, yo, which is, yeah. a, which is and, awesome. And it's, it's uh, very generous. But the thing is that I was willing and able to kind of, as they say in Hollywood, it's kind of hackneyed, but it's true. You kind of reinvent yourself. Absolutely. I'm still doing my regular stuff. Yep. Working with all That's these even great getting people. better now. You're back on Ninja Turtles yeah. again, the third but, iteration of it. Right. And direct. And now go ahead. Now talk and about I'm, that. What are you doing now? I'm now directing Ninja Turtles. Look which, at that. Uh, yeah. And they came the to me. The voice directing. Voice directing. Amazing. Uh, but, but the thing, there's an that old adage about work begats work. But I'll tell you what. What I learned, and I, I knew it was true because I'd experienced it, but I'd forgotten uh, because I'd been working really steadily. Um, I had another epiphany. This time when I was really down, going, oh, man, I, the phone's not ringing, all that stuff you hear about from actors. Yep. So when I decided to take action, and honestly, you guys, I don't know that the taking the action to work on my podcast was the secret, but any action. Anything. Anything yep. that allows you to get back and remember what it is mm -hmm. about your circumstance that drove you to come from 2,000 miles away or on the other side of the planet yep. to be in Hollywood. Okay, great. You've reached this pinnacle. Hollywood doesn't need you, and it went away. So now what is it about this thing that you would do for free? Well, I love, I have my friends like Butch, and I want to talk to them. And it turns out that if I shine a, lot on, shine a light on you and Lorraine and Tress and all these other people, Maurice, the audience goes, oh, my God, I had no idea that Butch did this and this and this. I didn't mm -hmm. know that Maurice LaMarche is the brain, but he also won back-to-back -back Emmys for his work on Futurama? Amazing. Are you kidding me? Amazing. I had no idea that, that Tress McNeil has done 600 episodes of The Simpsons. Oh, and she's also Babs Bunny, and she's also Dot Warner, mm -hmm. Warner, and mm -hmm. she's also on Veggie Tales, and she's also this and this and this. Mm -hmm. The audience ate it up. Yeah. But the, the secret was getting my passion back and getting my yep. Jones back and taking the plunge to, to say, I'm going to just get going. Cause you know what? Ain't nobody going to do it for me. Thank you. And that's another thing too. And they, they shouldn't. They, well, they shouldn't. And also, um, there's a, there's a, a famous, um, actress that's out that just released. I won't say the name, but, uh, just released a YouTube video recently, um, begging for work, mm -hmm. begging for work. Yeah, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, right? Begging for work. And then I watched this video and uh, very well known, uh, comedian person, but begging for work, and then it, in the video saying, 
well, so-and-so got someone, uh, a hand picked for them. No one ever did that for me. And mm-hmm. it was all about this person. And, and they were whining mm-hmm. and they were really complaining. And it's like, lady, look, this isn't about uh, what everyone can do for you. It's what you can do for yourself. And hey, how about you do something for others first? Mm-hmm. I know you step out and do something for others. It's always going to come back to you. Yeah. It's always going to come back. But what I got out of that video was a lot of selfishness. Well, and, and I, I know you're I'm not saying about... I'm not selfish. No, either, no, no. You know? and, and we all look. Nobody wants uh, to. I certainly wouldn't want to be blacklisted or perceived as being blacklisted. Exactly. Or sometimes it's your your own perception, um, and also I'm responsible for everything I say or do. And now mm-hmm. we are in an age where whether you like it or not, everything I say on camera is for ever. That's true. It's forever. Uh, forever. And I have had... Thank the, goodness the internet wasn't around when I was a kid. Tell me about <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, my oh God. listen. I I have very few little photos of myself when I was a kid, but I didn't even want to see oh, those no. photos. I, 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 um, and, and I have to say that I, I think, by and large, I've been a pretty decent guy. However, every now For and the then... the last hour you have. Yeah, yeah, I have. Not I so have bad. had times when the, when the camera has been on me at a Comic-Con, and I'll be doing a character voice, and I will say a four-letter word, and I, will, I won't be telling a dirty joke... But I'm like, oh, well, that's out there. <laughs> and now yeah. it's funny, and yeah. I get why it's funny. Yeah. Because there's something very, there, there is something irreverent about hearing a, a favorite voice say a dirty word. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was born at night, but not last night. I totally get that. <laughs> However, I accept that. So if someday somebody says, hey, Rob, um, hi, yeah, it's uh, Disney Marketing. And you're doing a character for us now. And we just saw an interview in which you did the character voice and you used, you know, the S word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, if that happens again, yeah, you're done. Yeah. And you're like, oh. Totally mm-hmm. accept that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I totally do. Yep. So you have to, one has to be, in my view, yep. responsible for their actions. And to the extent it causes you pain and suffering in your career, I, I mean, People are going to say, you know, they're going to cover their CYA, uh, right? Got it. The, the, the situation with this actress, I, um, I I was watching this and I was hoping for some sincerity in mm-hmm. the video because I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I didn't sense any. And I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody. No, no, no. I know you're But I, I was very, I felt very bad for this person. And I didn't before. Mm-hmm. I, when I, all, all the stuff that's happened, I didn't feel bad at all. But then I saw this video and I felt bad that this person had to resort to this. It's, it's, it is kind of... Um, Pathetic. Yeah, and, pathetic. Uh, and this is and it's difficult to look at that circumstance and and not say, well, what did you expect? Yeah. Because this person is a Hollywood veteran. Yeah. And I am. I'm not even a celebrity, man. Neither am and I. I know that I am responsible for what I say. And and um, and I'm also responsible for figuring out how to get back into the good graces of the people that hire me. Mm -hmm. I have friends, and you do too, Mm -hmm. who have been alcoholics, who Mm -hmm. have been um, drug addicts, and are on the program who have burned bridges, and they come back and they figure it out. They say, I'm sorry, Rob. I want to make amends. I understand Mm -hmm. that I accept my responsibility, and I have done some real damage in this town. Mm -hmm. I want to save my career, and I'll be damned. They have. Yep. And I, good I, for them. Yeah, there was a situation I had very recently with an actor on one of my shows and uh, this person and it was it started slow and then but uh, this person started missing sessions mm-hmm. and started uh, then then they'd miss sessions and not tell us in time. Yeah. Then they would lie about missing the sessions as to why they missed the sessions. And it got to the point it went on for two or three years and I finally had to sit the person down and say, I hate to tell you this, yeah. but it uh as much as I love you, and I want you to know I love you, you're my friend, but it comes down to now you're messing with me. Business. Thank you. Now you're messing with everybody else because everybody else is affected by this behavior. I'm going to have to make a change, and I hate to tell you this, but we're going to start those procedures now. Yeah. And this person straightened their act up. Great. It was Good. amazing. Yeah. And you never know that you may have saved that person's life. I, well, Literally. I, if, if I would never take credit for that, but uh, no, it would be great. No, but if, if you never know. And that, and that is really important, Butch, that people know that. Because irrespective of what you do for a living, the world doesn't owe it to you. No. And I say this utterly understanding that I came from a relatively normal background. Both my parents were together. I don't know what it's like 
to go through the horror of a bad childhood, abusive, um, you know, a, 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 divorce. I, I, yeah. I, yes, I have had a remarkably wonderful life. Mm-hmm. However, um, unfortunately, the world doesn't care at a certain point. You know, people just don't care about what your circumstance are, is. They, they, they say, can you deliver? And as compassionate and empathic as you are, you even get to a point where you say, dude, I love you, and you know how much I love you. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows what kind of guy you are in Hollywood, Butch. Mm-hmm. But this is Viacom's money. Yeah. And it's not about whether or not this woman or this man has trouble with booze or, or, or whatever it is. It's about my job isn't getting done, and now my family is struggling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I can't deliver if you don't deliver. Right. And, so, then, and, and, and by the way, and then that's another big lesson we're talking about here is no one is irreplaceable. Th- t- Zero. Thank you. If <laughs> I many, die tomorrow, many, people, right. you know, you'd say, thank God. But um, <laughs> would never. No, no, no not on look, camera. If, anyway. if I die tomorrow, people would say, oh, Rob was a pretty nice guy. Sure did some funny stuff. You know what? <laughs> we better recast. We better, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, I get it. You know, it's the, not personal. You see these blurbs on the news. It's like, so-and-so has just passed away. The right. actor was known for this, this, and this. And here's your holiday weather. Next. Yeah, here's your holiday weather. And you're like, whoa. Right. It's called show business. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I'm oh, sorry. Like I, I, just, I just saw Justice League last night. Yeah. And um, that was like, and Ben Affleck is like the 10th guy who played Batman. Right. It's like, you don't, you have, you have, a, there's anybody is replaceable. Right. And that's why anybody. I say, I get it. I, I can't draw them and I don't write them. I am an actor. I'm good at my job. Mm-hmm. But. The characters are famous, and I utterly get that yeah. distinction. Now, I'm working hard to make myself more famous and recognizable well, sure. because it plays into how I can up my game to get more and better work because Hollywood will always have a cachet so- associated with celebrity, yep. and I accept that. Yep. Again, I'm not going to change Hollywood. It's not Hollywood's fault. It's the way it works. Mm-hmm. If a kid who has 5 million Twitter followers is going to get is going to be the next – superstar voice guy that's fine yep. that's the way hollywood yep. is trending yep. so i have to manipulate uh, or i can retire i don't right. want to retire so if right. i want to play i have to change the way i operate and i'm willing to accept that and move on okay so, gotcha anyway. you know um that's that first of all it's amazing sage advice Thank and you. uh i think we're gonna um talk about now because we've talked about all the serious stuff. Yeah. This is very serious stuff. Oh, it's yeah. very cool. Right. I want to get into, and I think the audience wants to hear some of the voices that you do. Oh, please. Now, that, that, was, that was a little bit of Yakko from uh, Animaniacs. Yes. I know that you did, uh, you, now, for, for, I, I, it's funny to get my head around this because, Rob, you have so much insight and so much intelligence. Number one, it's great. Yeah, that's you, amazing. An actor yeah, exactly. has anything <laughs> resembling intelligence. <laughs> I, I get what talking. you're saying. Yeah. No, but you're saying you're inventing yourself and doing uh, your own podcast. Now it's, it's fun. Being, yeah. Now, by the way, where can people find it on oh, Nerdist? How do thank we find you. Well, it? yeah, go to some, it's called, they can find it at nerdist.com they'll, they'll, there will be a link there or they can go to Project Alpha. On one, of the, on one of those computer devices? On the, yes. On okay. the thing on the, the, yeah, they the, have the, a little the you, light uh, box? Yes. The, and you have a little I have a, a couple of a, a two squirrel computer <laughs> that powers it. You crank it up. Yeah, I, Mine is I got a big powered. residual check so I have two squirrels. Yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. nice. Um, but and yeah, so you, go to Project they, Alpha A-L-P-H-A.com and it's called cool. Talking Tunes and You'll see everybody so far. You're going to be on. We have everybody. You heard from, it here. I'm on. I'm yeah. going to be on. Last week was Kerry Elwes, and because uh, he does a lot of cartoons, and Maurice LaMarche, and mm-hmm. uh, Andrea Romano, and Seth Green, and um, we're, Ron Perlman's going to be on. And you're going to love gonna, Ron Perlman. Ball. Speaking yeah. of Ron Perlman, he's been on. Ron Perlman was on Danny. That's Phantom right. He with was you. the principal. Yeah. He, he played Mr. Lancer, and one of the nicest human Terrific. beings. Yeah. I mean, I didn't expect it either because back in like ten years ago, we did Danny Phantom. Ron Perlman was still a pretty. He was a very big name then. Yeah, because and of he, Hellboy. Yeah, he was Hellboy, and yeah. he was also Beauty and the Beast sure. in the '90s TV show. But he he was, it was so, before Sons. What's that? It would be Four Sons of Anarchy. The Four Sons yeah. of Anarchy, yeah, which I loved. Oh. I, I, I started watching Intense, that. Like, yeah. He was fantastic. But the nicest guy, most down-to-earth dude, complimentary, sweet. And you're like, Ron Easy Perlman. to work with. Thank you. And then and, and you're like, wow, Ron Perlman's coming in. This will be great. And he was. And I've worked with some high-level actors that have been just complete prima donnas. Yeah. And you don't want to go there. But anyway, he did Danny Phantom's principal, Mr. Lancer. And you did. Who were you on Danny Phantom? I was Jack Fenton, Danny's father. Um <laughs> I was also the box ghost. Beware. That's the one. That's um, the one people want to hear. I get I, more. I get more 
request. Oh, yeah, that's another one. People say, can you just say beware? I'll say, yeah, beware. No, like the box. Though. Beware! <laughs> just, ah! I, have, I have power over things, cardboard and square. square. Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah. God. That yeah. was and that was the thing. It's like that character, just because you came, that was supposed to be a one-off character. Oh, that's right. I think the script said Danny's fighting a ghost. Yeah. And, and we're it, like, we did a whole uh, bunch of episodes with We that gave guy. the ghost like one line, and then you yeah. killed the line. We're like, Let's, we got to bring that ghost back. And then people started liking the ghost. Yeah. yeah. So that's how a voice actor can make their own career. Totally. You come in with a choice, uh -huh. and then you uh, deliver that choice and just make the And you also allowed me to be, I was also technish, <laughs> and <laughs> because I, Gilbert lived on the East Coast, and I just did Gilbert Gottfried's podcast. Pretty much. <laughs> and he said, have we ever worked together? And I said, no, but I've stolen money from you because, <laughs> because I did this character on a show called, and he said, oh, it's Danny Phantom. And I said, I <laughs> oh, wondered he, who that he, did was. Did he say that? Yeah. Oh, you knew it. You sound like Stan Lee now. Because Stan Lee says Stan Lee now. says now, I've got $500 million in my <laughs> britches. Want to see? One of my favorite Gilbert Godfrey jokes was, do you think people in the Middle Ages would stand around and go, gee, this is a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> He Gilbert Gottfried. So nice. Oh, I'll bet. I love him. And then him. when you talk to him normally, he talks oh, like yeah, this. He's, he's very like a little very, mellow dude. Very smart. Yeah, very yeah. smart dude. And then uh, you also were on Jimmy Neutron. Who'd you do on Jimmy yeah, Neutron? Yeah, I was Carl Weezer on Jimmy Neutron, right, yeah. which was another one, I think, that I'm uh, <laughs> He's so excited. Uh, <laughs> well, Jay, Jason's 11. He loves Jimmy yeah, Neutron. Yeah, yeah exactly. so am I cr up here. <laughs> um, didn't, didn't Carl have a lazy L? A lazy, oh, yeah. Yes, thank you for it, suggesting him. And that was a choice. There for you the go. llamas. For yes, the llamas. Because when I said the first time I said llama, I thought it might really be interesting if he can't pronounce the L like so. He says llama, llama, llama <laughs> because it's like Tom Brokaw. Tom, I, I was going to say Tom Brokaw, yeah. But do you know what? What? That choice really worked exactly what you were talking about. The writers started writing words that were difficult for me to pronounce exactly, on yeah. purpose yeah, exactly. because it was a charming aspect and it right. made the character more organic. And memorable. And more memorable. Memorable, thank you. And so those choices happen as a result of the actor working with the producer. Um, it's like Daffy Duck talks like this with a lift. Exactly. You know, exactly. And so then 70 years later. They start, ask, they start writing. Um, you know, Bob Clampett and folks, Charlie, uh, I, I mean, um, um, Oh, what's his name? Um, I forgot. Bob Clampett, who? Yeah, Bob Clampett or, or Bob Kim McKimson. Or people oh, start, yo, yo, Chuck Jones. Start, Chuck Jones start writing go. scripts with S's in them, specifically because Mel starts doing, you're despicable. Right, exactly. Right? And, it, and it is absolutely the hallmark of the character, and now people know it for 60 years. It's amazing, man. Yeah. And then also you did, uh, you were on Tough Puppy, my show Tough I Puppy. I was. I got to be, I got to be. Um, bird brain. Bird brain. And I was <laughs> stealing from our dead friend, Jonathan Harris. Uh, oh, dear. Dr. Smith from. Yes, uh, yeah, don't Dr. talk Smith to me. You talk to me. Lost Lost of Bones, who I knew very well. Oh, love. What, I, 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 well, I grew up watching Lost oh. in Space. And it's like, come with me, you bubble-headed booby. Oh, my God. And then we made you a uh, bird brain, the blue-bottomed booby. Yes. He, and he a blue-bottomed booby. And he, and he couldn't fly. Right, because it sounded like something Dr. Smith would say. He would say, <laughs> don't talk to me, you sanctimonious bucket of boats. It was very pontificatory. I like, how, I like how Lost in Space started off as the Guy Williams action-adventure show and turned into the kid, the robot, and Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. <laughs> and he was just like that in real life. Oh, my gosh. Over the top. And um, yeah, but, but, he but, but he would have been thrilled that I stole his voice. Oh, he would have been yeah. thrilled. Yeah, he... Uh, he He's here right now. Bring him. Come on out, come Doc, on out Doc, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan Harris. He's in a jar. But but you did Bird Brain, which I yes. absolutely loved. We gave you all those henchmen. I know yeah. hench people. Yeah, and, yeah. One, you had an owl that said and who, and a bat, and a bat that yeah. said where. Yeah. It's like we're going to we're going to catch Agent Puppy. Who? who? Agent Puppy. Where? where? Oh. <laughs> Over there at Tough. Hand around me. I shall fly to freedom. And we could. We, we just would laugh for. It. Hours, oh man. God, it's dude! Fantastic. It was. Uh, let me ask you one more thing. And yeah. this, this is a little more of a serious thing. Sure. I, I, I don't want to get you out of here without talking about this because no, it is no important. Problem. You went through a health situation recently, and you told me it was okay to talk about it. I did. Now, what was the health situation? Can you talk just a little bit about? That? I can. Um, almost two years ago, February of 2016, um, I'd had a lump on the left side of my neck. Um, and you know, you're a guy, and I played sports my whole life. Um, you know, if you bust your nose or you get a tooth chipped or whatever, you just whatever. Mm -hmm. And so most men, myself included, mm -hmm. unless something really, really hurts or you can't feel your leg or right. whatever, you don't go to the doctor. So I just let it go for a year until it was time a for year. My, a year until it was time for another physical. And mm -hmm. I went in and it was and it was uh, I had uh, my uh, my internist, Dr. Gindy and uh, over at Cedars. He uh, I said, hey, man, what do you think about this? And he put his fingers on this lump and you would not have been able to see it. But if I put your hands on it, you just said, oh, geez, man, mm -hmm. what are you doing? And he said the same thing in five seconds. He said, 
not good. And I've known this guy forever. I said, come on. He said, no, man, it's, this is not good. And I said, why? He goes, well, firstly, it's right where a lymph node probably is, and it's hard as a rock. It's not soft. Mm -hmm. If it's soft, it's probably a low-grade infection, which happens you get, you know, when you get mumps or measles or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to go see an ENT and your nose throat guy tomorrow. I went, and within about a week, it had been diagnosed as stage three throat cancer. And the reason it had been stage three wow. was because this was the area to which the cancer had spread. It turns out that the primary tumor was at the base of my tongue in my throat. Wow. Not a smoker. One of those things. But you know what? It's kind of like we were talking about earlier. Um, it's that not only attitude of gratitude, mm -hmm. but it's understanding that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time, Butch. And I can say right from the get-go, there were maybe a handful of people that I had to tell um, about what was going on. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it on Facebook. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, respectful you guys. I, I, I love all of my people who are fans and all of that. But people will put on Facebook, you know, my dog's going in to be groomed today and has a cough. It, my, your prayers would be appreciated. And you want to yeah. say, look, I love your doggie. I love my doggies. Mm -hmm. But I, I get the relative importance of stuff in other people's lives. Of course. And I didn't want to alert anybody. And truth, and the other part of the equation was there's a, a practical ad aspect of that, that you don't want to give people a reason ultimately not to hire you. Mm -hmm. I understand exactly why they might not, mm -hmm. because they might be deferential. They may say, we love Rob, but I don't want to strain him. I yes, know that if his course. voice doesn't yeah. work, yeah. and it may well uh, ultimately be as a result of complete love that they don't want to hurt me when I'm going, oh, no, 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 I'm okay, yeah. right? So I thought, don't tell anybody, I'm, I'm very close friends and, and people. Yep. I told my siblings, my obviously my wife, my agents, and you. you and and I know, I was in that little select group. There were literally 10 people, Maurice LaMarche, Tress and Jess, maybe 10 people total, yep. I told. Yep. One of whom was you. And <clears throat> I, for two reasons. A, because I love you and you're my friend. But B, because at the time we were still working on some stuff that you may have had, had me come in to do Absolutely. ADR on. Yep. And I needed to tell you from a purely business standpoint, yep. just like with Ninja Turtles. Yep. Look, if you can hold it till I'm done with my treatment, I think I'll be able to speak, but I won't know for probably six months. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can't, I totally get it. So I want to let you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if you need to replace me, I totally understand. It is not personal. I have to obviously take care of this. Mm -hmm. And my doctor said right away, you're going to die someday, but not from this. However, the treatment is going to kick your ass. Mm. It's really tough. Mm. And it is. But let me tell you something, folks, about the person that we're talking with today. Within a day of Mr. Hartman knowing what I was fixing to go through, I got the complete DVD set of The Office <laughs> and the complete DVD set of I Love Lucy <laughs> delivered to my home with a card that essentially said, I love you, brother. Here's something because you're going to be laid up for a while. And, mm -hmm. and, and he knew how much laughter meant to me. In fact, on my uh, Twitter feed, at, at, I'm at Yakko Pinky, Y-A-K-K-O-P-I-N-K-Y yep. on Twitter. And I say, laughter is the best medicine. The cool thing is you can't OD and the refills are free. There we go. And so you knew how important that was. Mm -hmm. Um, just because that is part and parcel of who I am. But this man didn't think, didn't think at all <laughs> about anything but my comfort. I need those back, by the way. Uh, yeah, well, I sold them on eBay. <laughs> I, I autographed them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got 12 bucks a box oh, for them. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. um, wow, 12, that's Yeah, and good. I bought booze. <laughs> just, I, you know, I may be dumb, but I'm not stupid. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the point is that you're, you, we've, uh, and I'm fine. I, it was, I, I've, I've been a year and a half So successfully treatment. beat the cancer. I'm, I'm awesome, okay. Man. I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm cured. I have to go back to have, you know, CAT scans every now and then. But relative to what people deal with, Every day, mm -hmm. um, it was my turn to take a punch. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hero. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that I that my story can be inspirational. But you, as a result of your work, and I, a result of mine, we have spoken to or drawn things for children all over the world. Mm. I, as a result of Ninja Turtles, Pinky and the Brain, um, D uh, Danny, Danny Phantom, Phantom, yeah, that's whatever. It. I have been. I, I don't even know how many times I've talked to sick kids, either in person or yeah, on the phone. Yeah. And we all do it. Okay? We do. But also, 
I've kept in touch with a number of parents whose children have ultimately died as yeah. a result of the mm-hmm. things that they that we talk to them about, right? Mm-hmm. And my kid is married and healthy. Your beautiful girls are the same. They're healthy. They're great, right? Mm-hmm. So at 59 years old, I got thrown a bit, a bit of a curve. Mm-hmm. And as a result of the way I've been reared and the fact that I didn't expect it to be easy, and my life by and large has been pretty easy, yeah. but I'm, so, I'm grateful for all of it. So like, okay, bring it. Let's see, you know what? And the ultimate silver lining of all of it is that I get to be with my, my friends, new ones and old ones. Awesome. And your audience, you never know when somebody is gonna hear, yep. wow, this guy, I've loved Rob Paulson's work forever. I got a, a challenge that's coming up. You know what? Here's a guy who's made a living doing using his voice, and he got throat cancer and had seven weeks, eight weeks of radiation and chemo and a bunch of stuff and got through it. You know what? I can, I can, I think I can handle this mm-hmm. because I had the same inspiration from children who've ultimately died. So when I was dealt this hand, I thought, you know, before you freak out, those kids didn't make it, and their parents dealt with a tragedy that. I can't even comprehend yeah, it. Yeah. You got this. Yeah. And then you have friends like Butch awesome. who send you stuff to get you through it. So uh, thank, thank you, you for asking, but well, I am dude, one I mean, blessed just, man. I Yes, you are. And um, I can't thank you enough for being here today. Oh, dude. This could so go. So my th- pleasure. Dude, this, well, this is only the first time. We're going to be thank back you, multiple Butch. times. Narf. I plan on going like at least 13 episodes <laughs> and we're on nine. So we got four more to go. Great, man. Okay. no, And uh, I, I cannot thank uh, Rob Paulson enough thank you, for buddy. being on the show. Thanks for being on, Not man. Oh, it's, it's, it's awesome. Always a pleasure. It's always, and by this great, this gives me a great excuse to see you again, too. I need, a, I need a car payment. So if you could hire <laughs> you me. You can be my co host. Thank you, buddy. Well, I Jay, will. Well, Jace has to go back to school. Good. Recess is over. Kindergarten. Kindergarten, exactly. That's a little freaky. Um, I, again, guys, this has been uh, uh, Speech Bubble. We've had the amazing Rob Paulson. Thank you. Uh, and we may have him on very soon. We might be doing something. We're doing cool. something. We're doing something very special on Speech Bubble in the month of December. Great. And I'd love to have you be part of that as well. We'll be announcing that as we get closer it to the It would be uh, my pleasure, date. my friend. All right, my brother. It's great to see you again. Thank you, pal. Thanks for doing all the voices for us. I love us. you. We'll Thank have you, you back. And mm. uh, this has been Rob Paulson. This is Speech Bubble. Thanks very much. See you my later. pleasure. Bye. Bye. Hey, Heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Nude Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop. <laughs>